Almost 1,000 years ago in Iran, a physician named Ibn Sina made great contributions to science and is known as one of the founding fathers of medicine. He is a hero to many Iranians. In spite of his achievements, medicine in Iran didn't progress much until the end of the Qajar dynasty, at the beginning of the 20th century. During this period, medicine was still practiced by traditional healers, who used a range of therapies including cupping, bloodletting, potions and herbs. At that time in Iran, almost 98% of the people were illiterate. Travelogues of foreign visitors described the widely held superstitions of those days. These included giving a person suffering from fever a piece of paper or an egg with intentionally illegible writing on it or having the sight of a pregnant donkey for pain relief. <coughs> Iran was subject to periodic epidemics of infectious disease with high rates of mortality and little intervention by public institutions. Foreign embassies reported many of these public health problems. Cholera and plague frequently gained entry through ports on the Persian Gulf and there are reported deaths of entire villages. In addition, famine was not uncommon and in its wake came infectious diseases. The attitude of the public towards modern medicine was generally skeptical Hospitals at that time were called by the people cemeteries of the living. There was another big issue concerning people's health. Public baths in Iran. Bathing at public baths became an integral part of people's social lives. On a weekly basis, people met there to talk and socialize. The bathhouses were beautifully decorated, built below ground level in order to retain heat during the winter and remain cool during the summer. The water of these pools was changed infrequently, perhaps one to three times a year. It was described as smelling fetid. More importantly, it became a public health hazard and a source of infectious diseases, in particular those of the skin, eyes and gastrointestinal system. Foreign visitors to Iran report the disgusting state of these public bathhouses and how local people ignored the dangers of immersing themselves in them. In contrast to those practices, the high scriptures placed considerable emphasis on physical health based on the belief that the spirit and body are closely interrelated. Inspired by the admonitions of Abdul Baha, Baha'i communities around Iran started building new bathhouses with running showers from the early 1900s. In a short period of time, every major city in Iran had such improvements. There appears to have been many more important innovations introduced by the Baha'i community regarding public health. The first was the establishment of a major new hospital in Tehran, where American doctors, invited by Abdul Baha, brought Western medicine and science to the country. The second innovation had to do with creating a specific ward for the treatment of women. Dr. Susan Moody and Dr. Sarah Clark introduced a whole range of revolutionary treatments related to obstetrics, gynecology and maternal health. In addition, allied institutions were established such as a nursing school, a college for doctor's assistants, various outpatient clinics and a modern old people's home. These initiatives were characterized by some innovative practices which were influenced by modern science and the Baha'i beliefs towards the equality between men and women. Above all, these hospitals were known for treating people of all faiths. Jews, Muslims, Baha'is, Christians, and Zoroastrians. A Tehran newspaper paid homage to Dr. Susan Moody and her work in an editorial in 1910. 
We give the utmost thanks and gratitude to such a noble woman, to such a respected person, whose presence here is a great privilege to the country of Persia. On account of great care of this blessed person, the sick of all nationalities, Muslims and all, become healthy and well. We beg of God to keep this blessed and respected person with us. The Sihad Hospital became the first Western-inspired medical institution of Iran. Its legacy inspired Iranians for generations.